Ladies and gentlemen, Madame and Monsieur, we are back at it. Uh, I should uh, probably apologize for the complete inability that I have to execute a daily video blog. Uh, just didn't happen. However, it did have a desired result of opening up a whole lot of creativity. So since the last video blog, I have completed the first draft of a novel manuscript that will sit in a drawer for the next month and then come out and be in the editing process. And point number two, have begun significant work on a hands-on, technical, fun project that has got me brainstorming and thinking and creating little paper models and starting to learn electronics and getting back into some machinery things that I've done a little bit of, but not a lot. Spending a lot of time on YouTube researching, spending a lot of time reading, spending a lot of time out in the garage, just messing around, seeing what works. So we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of things here, um, but I think I should start with what the project is. That's right. Eventually, we will have the Rex 800. Rex 800 is a one-tenth scale model, eventually robot, based upon the dinosaur Sioux found at Chicago's Field Museum. I shouldn't say found. Currently housed at Chicago's Field Museum. Found in South Dakota. However, this all began with a chance meetup uh, out, uh, out in the western Illinois suburbs for me with a group called BurbSec East, a group of information security professionals who meet regularly in the Chicago metropolitan area to discuss all things information security, IT, and general tomfoolery. There is also occasionally some gaming involved, is my understanding, as well as a cigar group that meets on not an infrequent basis. So, I obtained the old Rex 800 skull at the single meeting of Burbsec East that I, or I'm sorry, Burbsec West that I attended, and got that from a lovely, adorable, brilliant penetration tester by the name of Johnny Christmas. And Johnny had made some of these on the 3D printer that he has. He had made a bunch of regular skulls, but he had also made this single T-800 style Terminator skull. And I thought it was absolutely amazing. And we got to the end of the evening and he says to everybody assembled, there are 20 people in this group all hanging out, talking. I'm meeting all of these people for the first time. And he says, hey, does anybody want the, the T-Rex 800 Terminator skull? And I'm sitting on my hands because I don't want to be that guy. It's my first night out meeting these people. Only coincidentally, the last time that I met them out, I'm going to remedy that problem. That's my fault. First time out meeting all of these people in person that I've talked to on Twitter and been learning from and exchanging ideas with. And I'm thinking, I cannot say that I want this thing. Well, Johnny asked the group, does anybody want it? He asks again. Being Irish, I know that you automatically wait until after the second time of everybody refusing, and then you jump in, because that's the point at which everybody recognizes politeness, says, oh, well, somebody's got to take it. So you have to be the first guy the third time it comes around. So third time comes around, really, seriously, does anybody want it? Absolutely I do. If nobody else wants it, I don't want to be that guy. I call myself out. I don't want to be that guy. But I do want this thing. So. The discussion ensues. Johnny tries to give me this as a, a sort of uh, door prize for having come out to my first Burbsec event. I managed to talk him into uh, letting me give him just enough to buy another beer, pay for a little bit of his material, and I walk away and think that I have the coolest thing in the world. In the meantime, the idea is percolating in the back of my head that, oh, cool, well, I'll paint this guy. And you know what? I've thought about getting into electronics. Maybe I'll get an Arduino and maybe, maybe we can make it to where the eyes light up to where, oh, did I say the eyes light up? Yeah. So maybe we can make it to where the eyes light up and it's got some 
other cool features going on. So I started fiddling and tinkering. I did some painting. I did some cleaning up. Um, ignore the little bit of hot glue there. Uh, Rex has a little bit of a sinus issue, okay? Just a little bit of hot snot. He'll be okay. She'll be okay. Modeled after Sue. Female robot dinosaur. What could possibly go wrong? So anyway, the idea was to eventually take on this project. But there were some things that had to happen first. The first thing was that I needed a space to work on the robot dinosaur. So I had to go and build myself a workbench and get my shop organized a little bit, clean some things up, ignore the mess in the background, and uh, find a place to, to work on Rex. So where I'm at now is I'm about a week into this build, and I just realized I really should be documenting this because it is a lot of fun. It's been a, a cool project to take on. But the biggest thing has been that I have zero goose egg experience with electronics, with programming, and with robots. So I am a triple threat when it comes to creating an autonomous robotic, artificially intelligent dinosaur. The ultimate outcome, of course, is to have an army of robot dinosaurs, right? Every boy's dream. So, along the way here, I'm going to go ahead and document this process. Partially for giggles, because robot dinosaurs. But also, I hope, as a way of giving a little bit of ideas about how you can just tinker and mess around and using very little money and hopefully mostly just your time and your, your enthusiasm come up with something neat. And I realized that yesterday when both my parents and my psychiatrist said, so where'd the robot dinosaur idea come from? And I said, out of my head. Well, do you have a kit? Are you using a kit? Nope, not at all. Out of pure lunacy. That's where this came from. So, uh, yeah, this is what we're working on. We, we are going to start fully building the Rex 800. Rex currently has a set of LED eyes, and she has a LED system up in her mouth there, by which I'm going to avoid using uh, everybody's favorite AVE phrase and just say focus. Um as a little backlighting. But right now you can see the big problem Rex has is that she doesn't really have a movable neck. What we've got right now, I'm gonna try and show this effectively, is I had drilled a hole and sunk a quarter 20 threaded rod coupler up in the skull and then bent this piece a quarter 20 rod. Let me see if I can hold the camera and point. Bent this piece a quarter 20 rod using a vise and a torch to get it kind of close hold and then it's coupled. This is the same kind of coupler that's buried up in the in the skull. That's just glued in place. And that comes into another piece of threaded rod which comes up into there's a bushing up inside this piece of green field that I cut off. It's held on with a hose clamp. Well, that's Eh, here's the problem with this. That's great for a static display. If Rex never was going to move, if Rex was never going to do anything, that mount would be done. I would go ahead and get rid of the, uh, the wire nuts, do some soldering, do some heat shrink wrapping, you know, clean up this resistor and some of this other stuff and get it, get it packaged up nicer. But I want Rex to move. I want Rex to greet me when I walk into the garage and I say, hey Rex, I want her eyes to light up because after all, every guy wants a woman whose eyes light up when he walks in the room. I also want her to be able to talk back to me. I want her to be able to growl at me in her own unique dinosaur language. This is becoming very Tolkien-esque kids. Uh, I want her to be able to recognize that somebody has come in and move her head. The eventual goal is for Rex to be truly robotic. I want Rex to be able to walk. I want Rex to be able to move around autonomously. Um, as you can see right now, none of the electronics are really hooked up. All this is 
to give Rex some eye looking light is a old wall wart charger that I have cut the power coupling off of, you know, the, the, the plug off of, and wired into some 22 gauge wire that's run up through Rex's spine, scare quotes, spine, and up to her neck where this bundle of wires comes out. Right now, Rex is set up with four possible wire options. And uh, the, only, the only thing that's in here that's even vaguely electronic, and it took me three days to figure out how to do this, is that there is a single resistor put in line on the negative side is a current limiter because the first time I hooked the LED up inside uh, that's inside Rex's mouth, the first time I plugged it into the wall wart, it began to catch on fire. So I realized we needed to do something about that. Everything else right now is pretty much just the same level of electronics knowledge that I had at 12. So we got some electronics that we're going to have to go through and learn. And I'm going to document some of that and show you guys as I come along. I've been in the house fiddling with the Arduino and got some voice control recognition stuff and starting to learn that. But the other big project, probably the next big project that's not electronic is going to be mechanical. And that is going to be making Rex's head able to move. Rex should be able to nod her head up and down. She should be able to turn her head left to right so that she can scan the environment. I would like her to be able to rock her head towards her shoulders. All of this takes, as you can see from behind here, right now, there's no real mounting system. Ignore the garage mess in the background. There is no real mounting system other than that single piece of threaded rod, and that's not going to work. So, my next big project started yesterday with a just a basic sketch and an index card of how can we give Rex a jaw, and how can we mount that 3D printed skull to a, uh, a system of uh, just a metal plate top and bottom that gives us a solid structure. So that was the initial drawing, right? Just some quick sketching to try and figure out, all right, well, you know, I need some kind of a, I need some kind of a drive motor. You know, I need some kind of servo and gear here that's gonna let the jaw open and close. I'm gonna need a hinge over here and I'm probably gonna put in a spring to help assist the, the rotator motor on the way back up. Um, we're going to need an upper jaw assembly that's going to be fixed while the lower jaw assembly bends. If the lower jaw assembly is going to bend, well, then it needs to be cut out and notched a little bit so that it's not going to interfere. So that was the first little bits of brainstorming. What came from that then, while I was sitting around yesterday, was this little paper model. And the idea here is that this paper model is the lower and upper jaw of what I think will work. And I just kind of gave myself an idea of, okay, well, here's where this thing would have to hinge. And, you know, it's going to need some kind of a bracket to mount it back onto the, the rest of the body. So this little bit of, you know, cardstock uh, index card cut and folded over. That was my initial thoughts on that. And tapering the front down some because, well, we really don't need the, the whole width. And Rex's snout tapers down. So that was the, the start of that. Well, this morning, about 5 a.m., came out to the, the garage and started coming up with some real templates because this is going to take, a, sorry for the hot spot, this is going to take a little bit of fine detail in the, in the machining here to get this to work. So what you're looking at now are the initial templates of the lower and upper jaw. And what I did was refine this design a little bit to where now... There is this bracket. I'm going to get this position so you can really see it. There will be a folded bracket coming down that the lower jaw will attach to. And then there's this bracket coming up that's going to cover basically the whole back side of Rex's skull and give us a giant mounting point for servos that will allow head swivel. Um, sorry, head swivel head twist, and nodding. Um, I suppose we can call these pitch, yaw, and roll positions, and that that's a, a good way of identifying them. The lower jaw assembly is the same thing. It's going to be made out of a single piece of pro aluminum, most likely, just a, a piece of uh, aluminum that I bend on a, a handbrake of some sort, 
and it'll have some some cutouts to allow the articulation of the jaw and the lower jaw's only responsibility is going to be opening and closing other, so that's going to need one small motor to drive that other than that that lower jaw is not going to do anything well that then led to what is in theory when my toothpick is fully in place a working prototype of what the jaw assembly will look like you can see that that toothpick keeps falling out on me uh, but this is that assembly for you 80s industrial fans we might call that a frontline assembly however that's the plan so in coming videos I'm going to document this actual build out uh, I've got two additional skulls currently being 3D printed. I glued Rex together, her jaws fixed, and initial Rex 1.0 has, uh, has almost reached the end of her usability when it comes to being a model for the mechanics. So I currently have two more jaws being printed. I am going to put links in the description to both uh, Johnny Christmas's Twitter account, the, the gentleman who printed this initial version that I got, and to the Dutch artist who designed the original 3D files and who has the 3D files available on a website where you can download them with a Creative Commons attribution, share and share alike reference. And I'm gonna go ahead and put his information down in the description as well, so you can check those out. I'm gonna document this build along the way. The, there is no intention of building Rexes to sell or anything like that. This is really just an exercise in, in creativity, in exploration. Trust me in messing up because we're gonna show those as well. Uh, I didn't think to start documenting this early enough, but uh, the hips are a really good example of a whoops from the get-go. Initially, Rex's legs and arms were simply bolted, screwed right to the center spine. Center spine and all of this other componentry right now is just half inch EMT electrical conduit because I spent a lot of years of my life as an electrician, so that stuff's laying around my garage. It's just found scrap. Same thing with the, the screws and the nuts and the washers. All stuff that I had. Nothing really bought here yet for the project. Uh, but what happened was, as you can imagine, when your legs mount here, you're incredibly unstable. So recognizing that we were going to need to make racks more stable, I went ahead um, used a drill and a file and did some kind of homemade tube notching there. It's not exactly ready for prime time, but it got it done. And went ahead and upgraded the, the hip joint to a through half inch bolt all the way through. Um, because of the weight of the, the head end right now, Rex is still not super stable on her own. These initial joints are all 632 screws. Um, the conduit is through drilled. The hinges are simply a coupling sort of thing that I made using some sheet metal. It's just cut out of sheet metal and almost looks like a bicycle chain or a chainsaw chain linkage is what I had in mind when I cut them up. The problem being that all the load is trying to transfer completely through the tube and it's just not awesome. So eventually we're going to have to do that. As you can see, if you get an angle here, a good view of the whole length. Uh, right now, Rex has got some scoliosis that I got to take care of and probably also have to go ahead and add some additional articulation to the spine itself to be able to really get her to balance. I went ahead and cut the tail into a couple of more sections as you... The, originally, the tail was a straight piece as well. That wasn't working, so we, we've made some modifications from the, the first initial, initial, initial thoughts. But the rest of them are all going to be documented. So I've been talking for almost 20 minutes now about a robot dinosaur that is yet to be. So I am going to stop. I am going to say thank you again to, especially to Johnny Christmas for getting me started on this idea. And uh, eventually here we will, uh, you guys will have the robot army to visit. And uh, hopefully we'll have some, have some fun, learn a little bit along the way, and probably have one or two really deep conversations about the ethics of creating artificially intelligent robotic dinosaurs in your garage. So, thanks for the thanks for taking your time. As always, time is the one resource that none of us can get back and I don't want to waste yours. So, thank you. Cheers.